the Sensible Senko. Welcome to my series on Sensible Senko. If you haven't done so already and have stumbled upon this video by accident, then you might want to check out the first video in the series. This is video two, version four, for those of you who have just taken on the Senko role and were actually promoted within your own school. If this is not relevant to you, then check out one of the other ones on the screen instead. Version 5 is particularly useful if you are a Senko who's been enrolled for a while and would like to freshen things up. It's not a secret, the five videos are very, very similar, but they do have their own little bits and pieces that are different. Oh, wow. This was me quite early in my career. In the second school I taught, which was a middle school with years five to eight, I was employed as a year six class teacher. I started there in my third year of teaching. Please bear in mind, I'm actually a secondary trained scientist. I had actually applied for a post in the science department, so it was a bit of a shock to the system to be offered a year six teaching pretty much everything except German and PE, one of which was my planning time. This was pre PPA allocations and the other I taught an additional music class. Not sure where that came from. The head teacher also asked me to enrol on a diploma in educational management. This was great. It was delivered on the school site by a local university and two of my colleagues, my new colleagues, were on the course with me. The head of languages and the Senko. The Senko was not very well and um, following an unfortunate series of personal events, by the Christmas she was actually on long term sick leave. The university lecturer who used to come to the school was also a governor of our school and she suggested to the head teacher I'd be a good person to take over the Senko role in her absence. So it wasn't really a promotion, I never actually got additional time or pay for it, but it was certainly a new opportunity. It's an interesting situation when you take on the Senko role. You're apparently plugged into a machine overnight which downloads the answer to every single SEN question anyone could possibly ask. You become an instant expert. What do you mean you haven't done this? Book your appointment immediately. Joking aside, this really does happen. All of a sudden, you're the fount of all knowledge and expected to know everything. Living up to that expectation can be difficult and you will frequently find yourself saying, can I get back to you on that one? Whilst mentally scheduling a session on the internet, either searching through Google or asking for advice on a Facebook group. Whereas the other Senkos are having to get to know the school and the systems in place, you have the advantage that you already know a lot of what is going on. You might even have been lucky enough to have shadowed the previous Senko or worked as an assistant Senko in the school. You don't have to ask how or where the SEN register is stored and you already know how staff are kept up to date with information. This doesn't mean you know everything though, and you may be surprised at the skeletons lurking in the closet. In my own situation, the Senko used to have us write and review the IEPs, as they were, three times a year. We had to keep a class copy and then give one to her, which I assumed was filed somewhere. Nope, there were no records retained on any of the students beyond what I could find from each staff member in the school. I'd always assumed that the TAs, or LSAs as they were at the time, were directed to support certain students in certain classes. Again, nope. They decided amongst themselves who they were supporting, when and where. Some classes hadn't had support for years simply because the TAs didn't like the teacher. So what appeared on the surface, even to me employed in the school, to be working was in fact a fallacy. Of course, I'm going back to pre-2000 and the things have changed a lot since then. I think I had a slightly trickier situation in that I was only filling in for the staff member until her return, so it was quite difficult to make long-term changes. As it was, when she did return, I continued in the role for another year while she got her feet back on the ground. I then left the school for another job and, to my understanding, she left shortly afterwards. I had to be careful not to tread on toes and offend. 
As a newly promoted member of staff, you still need to review the systems that are in place. You might be given access to things that you didn't have access to before or a higher level of that. So maybe it's more admin rights within your MIS management information system or a password to a secure area on the school network. You'll probably find yourself learning lots of new systems that you might have been vaguely aware of, but not necessarily using. You may have been promoted to the role because the department needs a little bit of a revamp, in which case making changes should be easier. I've recently been working with a school who have a named Senko, but she isn't interested in the role. And so they've recruited one of their HLTAs to undertake the operational Senko role. She is interested and determined to make a difference. Her problem at the moment is that although the strategic named Senko isn't interested in doing the job, she keeps putting blockers in the way of the HLTA or operational Senko, making changes that are quite honestly desperately needed. Even the poor head teacher is at a loss as to where to go next and has commissioned a full SEN review of the department in order to have an external person validate the concerns. You don't have to pay for an SEN review and you can do one yourself using materials available online. I'd suggest this to any Senko taking on a new position as then you've got a starting point or a baseline from which to write your action plan. Back to our systems. If things are working in your school as they are, then leave them alone for the time being. If they aren't, then kick them out and replace them with something new. My advice to you would be to approach this systematically. Don't try and do everything at once. It's too much for your staff to take on board and it's likely to end up with things falling by the wayside and not working. You then experience a sense of failure and your colleagues begin to question how you got the job. Sorry, I'm only being honest. What do I mean by systems? Well, I mean your identification of students who need support and should be on your register and those who should be looked after by another department. How you record SEN information and share that with the relevant individuals, including staff in school and how you engage with parents. Then you keep an eye on things and review whether it's working or not. You could start by overhauling the SEN register. Having already worked in the school, you probably know some of the students already, which makes your life a whole lot easier. We can perhaps assume that your students have been identified correctly and have a history in the filing cabinet ready. It's up to you to ensure that that identification continues smoothly. Maybe there's a hearty referral process in place in the school. If not, it might be a good place to start. Remember that the Senko role is now yours. And if the processes in place are not working for you, maybe you want to move to electric rather than paper, you're allowed to change it. You just need excellent people skills in persuading your team that change is good. I've assumed there are some pretty decent records in your school and if not have a look at one of the other versions of this video to get some ideas. You need to decide if those records and systems work for you and moving forward you need to decide what records you're going to keep and how you're going to keep them. Whatever you finally decide to use to continue identifying your students, make sure you keep a list of your criteria recorded somewhere. Partly so you can justify decisions if you're ever asked and partly as reference because believe me, you will forget. Your local authority might provide SEN matrices which suggest whether a child should be on your SEN register and I've included a couple of links in the description box below. But it's really down to school context and you'll need to get to know your school to make those decisions. Then again, you should know your school. Don't worry, the SEN register is fluid though, so you can put children on and take them off. Just make sure you keep the parents informed. You have to win hearts and minds just like any of the other Senkos, and it actually might be a bit of a challenge in your school. In a disaster zone, staff might be welcoming of someone who seems to vaguely know what they're doing you've just stepped up into a respected role. There might be a few misconceptions to handle, not least the fact that you didn't take that magic pill and become an SEN expert overnight. Maybe you already know that the way staff are informed is pretty rubbish and therefore you just need to find a way that works for you. Or maybe the method works, but staff are a little mm, stubborn at accessing the information. The Disaster Zone video in this series has some suggestions if you want to change things. 
moving on from informing our staff, we also need to work with our parents. Now, this could be interesting. If the parents held the previous Senko in high esteem too, you're going to have to convince them you're just as good, if not better. I'd like to think the Senkos left you a note about who they used to meet with regularly and why. You might have been the class teacher for a child at some point and some parents will find it difficult to picture you in a new and different role. I hadn't been at my school long enough really to experience this, but I did have a few issues in making it clear what an SEN issue was uh, that required the Senko and what they should be discussing with the class teacher or their form teacher. So once you've managed to get your feet under the table at your school, you'll need to make sure you stay on top of the things you've set up. Just because you've completed your keep it or kick it within the first few weeks, it doesn't mean it's done with. And you'll need to go back and review and repeat things regularly. If you've enjoyed this video, then click like and subscribe. And if you haven't had a look at my other offerings, please do. You can even leave a comment. If you've not seen it, have a look at the first video on being a sensible Senko, along with the other videos I have planned for the series. Here's what's coming up next. This first set of videos I have planned to follow on from that. Thanks very much for listening. Take care.